Hey guys, this is DG. Today we will learn what is network topology, its types and how they differ from one another. So let's start. Network topology is how computers connect or relate to one another in a computer network. It is of two types, physical topology and logical topology. Where physical topology describes the way computers connect with the help of cables, logical topology describes the way data flows from one computer to another within a computer network. The most common computer network used to interconnect physically distributed computers is local area network which has three main topologies, star topology, bus topology and ring topology. Others are mesh topology and hybrid topology. Please note the data in the network layer is in the form of IP packets. IP packets are packed into frames in the data link layer. Physical layer then transmits the frames into the transmission media. So in a computer network, data moves from one computer to another in the form of frames. The same term will be used in the further discussion. Starting with bus topology. In a bus topology, computers connect to a shared central cable called bus with taps and drop lines. Shared means that all connected computers use the same cable for data frame transmission. Taps are the connectors and drop lines are the cables running in between computers and the bus. In this topology, if a computer sends data frames to a second computer, all other computers connected to the same central cable also receive the frame. That is, other computers can hear what the first computer is saying. However, only the target computer accepts it, others reject the frame by checking the destination MAC address in the received frame. Suppose you are distributing prices as per the results of a competition. You ask Ram to come on the stage for his reward. So only Ram will go and collect the price. Same is in the case of bus topology. Only that computer accepts the frame to whom it is addressed to. Since Bus topology requires less cabling so it is easy to install and less expensive to implement as compared to other topologies. However, with the increase in the length of central cable and the increase in the count of taps, the strength of signal decreases. So only a limited number of computers can be connected in bus topology. In this topology, all computers depend on the central cable for data frame transmission. So if the central cable fails, it paralyzes the whole network. That is, bus topology has a very little fault tolerance. Here, a security risk also exists because all computers can hear what other computers are saying on the shared media. In a bus topology, only one computer can transmit data at a time. So, while one computer is sending a file to a printer, other computers have to wait. If other computers too start sending data at the same time, it will collide and corrupt the whole data. In such a case, data should be retransmitted. Therefore, if more computers connect to the same central cable, the network will become slower and also increase the chances of data collisions. It is one of the reason why bus topology is rarely used in modern computer networks. The collision can be avoided by using an access control protocol. For example, carrier sends multiple access with collision detection. Example of bus topology is Ethernet LAN. Next is star topology. In star topology, computers connect to a central device, a switch or a hub with point to point communication links. Point to point connection means that there is a dedicated link or cable between the two devices. Other devices cannot use it. In this topology, if one computer wants to send some data frame to another computer, it is first routed to the central device. The central device then either broadcast or unicast the received data frame towards the destination computer based on the type of the central device used. Broadcast means the transmission of data to all connected devices, while unicast means transmission of data to the target device only. 
If the central device is a hub, it broadcasts the received frame to all the connected computers. That is, a hub is a multi-port repeater. The frame has a destination MAC address, which is unique to every computer present in a network. So only target computer accepts the frame, others reject it. Since a hub broadcasts the received frame, so it increases unnecessary data traffic in the network. To overcome this limitation, a switch is used as a central device. Every computer has a unique MAC address. A switch stores the MAC address of the devices connected to its ports. It is called a switch table. Since data frame it receives has a destination MAC address and the switch knows that the device with MAC address MAC2 is connected to port P2, so the switch forwards the received data frame to port P2 only. Hence, instead of broadcasting, the switch unicasts the frame. Suppose your computer is connected to a printer with a start topology network. Now you click on print on your computer to print a file. The file is sent to the central device. If the central device is a hub, the file is forwarded to all connected computers. However, only printer accepts it. On the other hand, if the central device is a switch, the file is sent to printer only, that is unicast. Moreover, when the computer is busy in sending a file to the printer, computer A and B can also communicate with each other without affecting the computer printer link, that is switched connection allows simultaneous communication. On the other hand, a hub allows only one device to communicate at a time. Please note, if the destination MAC address in the frame is Ethernet broadcast address, then the switch also broadcasts the received frame. In start topology, only one input-output port and one cable is needed for each device to connect to several devices. It makes it less expensive than the mesh topology. It is also easy to reconfigure because we can add or remove devices simply by connecting or disconnecting one cable. If one cable connecting to the central device fails, only one communication link goes down and not the entire network. So, star topology has a good fault tolerance. Fault detection is also easy because we only need to locate a computer which is not receiving data. However, if the central device goes down, the whole network is paralyzed. One more limitation in star topology is the number of computers in a network is limited by the number of input-output ports in the central device. Example of star topology is high-speed LAN. Now ring topology. In a ring topology, each computer connects to two adjacent computers to form a ring. Data transmitted by one computer moves from one computer to another in a circular fashion to reach its final destination. The advantages of ring topology are easy installation and less cabling. In this topology, data moves in one direction. It reduces the chances of data packet collisions. The ring topology is relatively easy to troubleshoot because we only need to locate a computer who stops receiving data from its upstream neighbor. However, as each data frame has to pass all computers between the source and destination, it makes data transmission slower than the star topology. Since all computers connect to form a closed loop, one fault paralyzes the whole network. It is difficult to reconfigure because we need to break the ring to add or remove the computers. Due to this reason, the physical ring topology is rarely used. Instead, logical ring topology is used. Example of ring topology is token ring. Token ring does not use a physical ring topology. Instead, it uses physical star and logical ring topology in which data moves in a circular fashion. Token ring uses a token passing protocol where a frame called token keeps on circulating on the ring. If one computer has data frames to transmit, it holds the token and transmits the frame. Once the transmission is done, the token is released into the network. A token ring network is deterministic, meaning 
Each connected computer is given access for transmission at fixed time intervals. Therefore, a network can have one physical topology and an entirely different logical topology at the same time. Mesh Topology In a fully connected mesh topology, each device has a point-to-point -point link to every device in the network. Therefore, if the number of devices in a network is 4, then the number of links or cables each device have is 4 minus 1, that is 3. Now, we have 4 devices. Therefore, total number of links or cables 4 devices have is 4 into 4 minus 1, that is 12. Note that these are simplex links. In simplex links, data can move in one direction only. So, one link is used for sending data and the other is used to receive data from the adjacent computer. Duplex links are the ones where data can move in both directions. Therefore, we can replace two simplex links with one duplex link. Hence, the total number of duplex links in the mesh topology is 4 into 4 minus 1 by 2, that is 6. In general, if there are n devices, the total number of simplex links are n into n minus 1. The total number of duplex links are n into n minus 1 by 2. And the total number of input output ports in each device are n minus 1. So, if the total number of computers to be connected is 10, then the total number of duplex links will be 45. And each device should have 9 input output ports, which would be difficult to manage and also increase the cost. However, the dedicated point-to-point -point link eliminates traffic problems, which are encountered if a link is shared among several devices. The dedicated point-to-point -point link maintains privacy and security of the messages shared between two devices because other computers cannot hear what computer A is saying to computer B. If one link fails, it does not affect the whole network, that is, good fault tolerance. Since each device is connected to every device, so installation is difficult. Multiple input-output ports and a large number of cables increase the cost and make it expensive. More cables in mesh topology consume large space too. Example of mesh topology is the connection between regional telephone offices. All topologies are interconnected to form a hybrid topology. Now, every topology has its merits and demerits. So, while choosing a physical topology for a network, we should always consider its cost, ease of installation, ease of maintenance, and cable fault tolerance. If you have learned something from this video, then please like this video. Share this video so that more people can learn. Subscribe to Tech Terms if you want to learn more and turn the notification icon on. Thanks for watching.